Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My fiancé seemed perfect until my sister's investigation revealed his hidden life of crime. Now I'm torn between confronting him or staying far away. I, 24, female, started dating my fiancé, 26, male, two years ago. I didn't really like him at first, but after continued persistence on his part, I gave in and said yes to going out on a date. He was very happy about it. He took me out to a fancy hotel and was very gentlemanly. I was impressed. He asked me out again and I said yes. After going out for three months, he asked me to be his girlfriend and I accepted. In this time period, I had developed feelings for him and he had too. Everything was going pretty well. He was romantic and passionate and we were in love. Two years later, he proposed and I was jumping for joy. I screamed yes when he asked me. My whole family had met him except my sister. My sister moved abroad after attending university here. It was a huge opportunity and we supported her. My sister is a few years older than me. I have flown to visit her a couple of times, but her schedule is too packed for her to come down here. I wanted her to meet my boyfriend, now fiancés, but alas, we couldn't set anything up. He was busy with work and couldn't fly with me. When I told my sister I was engaged, she was excited for me. She promised that she would take time off from work to come down for my wedding. I was elated. While discussing wedding plans with him, we got to talking about the guest list. Nothing was set as we decided to be engaged for a year and get married the next. I hadn't told him that I spoke to my sister, but I mentioned that she may come down for our wedding. I wanted it to be a surprise. He had mentioned a few times how sorry he was that he couldn't take time off to visit her, so I thought he would be happy when he finally met her. I didn't know much about his work. All I knew was that he was a portfolio manager and investor. I didn't ask many questions, but he did make me aware that he was financially comfortable and planned to retire early. I was a fresher in the fashion industry back then and was just starting out. He was very supportive of my career, telling me to take my time. We gelled nicely. When we started looking at different venues for the ceremony, he was there. He didn't miss out on any of the wedding decisions, and I loved that. The date had been set, and it was sooner than expected. There were only a few months left until the wedding. We had started putting down some deposits for the bookings. Not everything was booked yet, though. One day, I got a call from my sister. She told me that she was going to be flying out early and will be here for around six months for business purposes. I was so excited. My sister was coming down early and not only for a day but for a whole six months. Of course, I didn't expect her to be around me all the time. After all, she was here for business purposes, but we would still be closer together and she could help decide some stuff when she had time. I really valued her opinion. My to-be husband obviously didn't know about this. It was going to be a huge surprise and he was going to get a chance to actually bond with her like he did with the rest of my family. I told him that my sister was not sure if she was going to make it to our wedding. He seemed a little disappointed and I felt bad, but I didn't want to ruin the surprise. He then told me to remove her name from the guest list as she wasn't sure if she would be coming, but I refused. I told him that she may come, so I didn't want to remove her name from the guest list. He insisted that if she were to come, then we could add her name back. But for now, we needed to finalize the list and RSVP everybody. I agreed with him, but I obviously didn't take her name off the list. Soon the day came. My sister would be landing today. I convinced him that one of our family members was flying out early and that we needed to go pick them up. He didn't mind. While we were waiting at the airport, he asked me again who it was, and I just told him it was a distant family member. I didn't want to give away anything. I finally saw my sister, and we rushed to hug each other. We were giggling and laughing. It had been so long, and I missed her. My fiancé was surprised. He smiled, came forward, and hugged her, too. They were exchanging greetings and introducing themselves to each other face to face for the first time. We went home, and my family was feeling emotional, too. They hadn't flown out as much as me, so they hadn't seen her in person for a longer period of time. A few days passed, and I set up a little coffee date for the three of us. I wanted them to bond, but I didn't want it to be awkward. So we met up. Everything was going well. She asked questions about his family, and they were getting to know each other, but it became a little awkward when she started asking him questions about his work. I didn't notice at first, but he was evading a lot of her questions. I thought it may just be in my mind. After breakfast, he said that he had something urgent come up, so he had to leave. I was fine with it. 
I hung out with my sister a little more. She asked me about his work, but I told her I didn't know much about it. I told her what he told me, that he was a portfolio manager and investor. I asked what was going on in her head and she told me not to mind her. She told me to set up a few more dates between us. I could tell she was curious about his work. Every time we hung out, she would raise questions about his work and he'd make up a reason and leave. I started noticing a pattern and I didn't know what it was about. I tried asking him directly, but he told me that he didn't know what I was talking about. My sister told me that she wanted to do a little digging about his work just for fun, saying curiosity got the best of her. I thought she was getting paranoid, but I was curious too, so I let her do her thing. What harm could a little curiosity do? Around two months passed and out of nowhere, I got a call from my sister in the middle of the night asking me where I was. I told her I was at home and asked her if everything was all right. She sounded so worried and concerned. She told me that she wanted to meet up with me immediately. It was in the middle of night, so I kept asking her what it was about. I asked her to come over, but she refused. Eventually, I relented and went to her. She was staying with my parents. When I reached there, everybody was awake. It looked like they were waiting for me. I was confused. I asked them what this was about. My sister made me sit down and showed me a few documents. She explained them to me and I was shocked in horror. I couldn't believe all the papers that lay before me. It turns out my to-be husband was related to a lot of shady people. I don't mean as just business partners, but as in related, as in family related. And from what I knew, he didn't have any family in the country. His so-called portfolio management was actually some type of fraudulent scheme and he had gotten away with it for years. He was committing fraud and had been doing it for years. I couldn't understand how no one caught him. I wanted to confront him about this face to face, but my family refused to let me go, saying it was too dangerous. They told me to get the cops involved and I had no option but to do so. The cops had enough evidence for an arrest warrant. He got arrested. That day, I was emotionally distraught. I was in disbelief. I still hadn't processed what had happened. My sister had gotten suspicious of him and had hired a professional private investigator to get information on him. She couldn't figure it out herself. He hadn't tried to reach out to me. I had a feeling he knew that I had gotten the cops involved. My family was helping me take down the deposits for the bookings. I was in an emotional wreck and just stayed with my sister and parents. I don't know what is going to happen next or if I should contact him or not. Update 1. One month later, the evidence wasn't enough to take it further. My family is very confused. He was released from prison. My sister contacted the private investigator again, but he warned us to stay away. It was as if he was telling us to not escalate the situation and to just let it go. I don't know what is happening. My ex fiance still hasn't contacted me. Update 2. Two weeks later, he contacted me. He says he wants to meet me at his place. I refused. I want to meet him, though. I want to ask him to his face about what's going on. The situation was clearly more complex than we had anticipated. I want answers. What should I do? Girl, keep your ass in the house and do not go to his place. I don't owe him anything. Send back everything that belongs to him and cut him off. This is the safest option. Info, I need more info on what he was involved in. But you won't get those answers unless you meet him. Maybe meet him somewhere more public. I think OP shouldn't have called the cops on him so fast. She was obviously influenced by her family. He may be innocent, you know. It may not be as bad as your sister made it seem. Not related, but I think he may still have feelings for you. No wonder he's asking to meet. Next story. We live on campus and my roommate of this year, Lila, is the best one I had the pleasure of living with so far. There's just one thing. She keeps some of her friend's food supplies in our room since theirs is cramped and there's no space. So her two friends have been going in and out of our room frequently. At first they would always knock before going in and say hi but over time I told them it's fine if they don't knock and they're welcome to go in any time. Two weeks ago though this girl, Z, moved in with them and I don't like her one bit. She didn't really do anything outrageously wrong, but the way she feels entitled to just barge into my room when we're practically strangers and not even talk to me got on my nerves. Plus, she woke me up several times with how violently she opened the door. So I told Lila that when I initially agreed to her friends coming in, I wasn't expecting such a big number and that the way the door is being opened would jolt me awake. She was good about it 
and said she'll ask them to knock from now on. Z only knocked for two days before she suddenly barged in again yesterday, searched around for what she needed, then walked out without so much as looking at me. So I got up and locked the door. When Z came later she was forced to knock and I only opened the door to a slit and told her I'm sorry Lila isn't in the room. She said she just wanted to grab something but I told her I'm sorry the only reason I've been letting them go in is because of Leela on the condition that they knocked. But since she wouldn't she would have to go through Leela from now on. She got mad and said she's not here to see my pretty face but because she was hungry and that the room is not just mine. I didn't want to debate this with her so I closed the door and locked it again. When Leela came back I thought she'd be on my side but she actually told me I should have talked to her first and not do this directly to her friend. She said Z wasn't required to greet me but that she'll talk to her again about the knocking. I told her she wasn't hearing me, that Z is no longer welcome with or without knocking unless she's here. She said I was being unreasonable and we'll talk again. Well we haven't since then and none of her friends came by again. Am I the a-hole here? Nah, it's your room too and you have a right to decide who has access and when. Obviously so does Lila but especially when you are there alone. You've been pretty lenient, but that led to the access being abused, so you set reasonable boundaries. Those boundaries are not being respected. Honestly, if it were me in my room, I'd be telling Lila that no one will be allowed access to your shared room, unless she is present, and that you'll be locking your door to visitors from now on. But that's your decision to make. I know my post made her out to be bad, but she was a good roommate until this happened. If she wanted to borrow something, she'd always ask me, my god, if she borrowed, let's say, my hair dryer, once she would not just go ahead and take it twice. No, she'd ask every single time. Do you know how precious this kind of behavior is? I've been with three roommates so far and I always had this problem with them. Also, I feel absolutely safe with her. I know she'd never take anything nor touch my bed or belongings without permission. Also, she gives little things back she borrows like the toilet paper roll when she gets paid when I have already forgotten about them. If it was someone else, I'll bet you they won't give it back until I've had to ask for it. This is why I was cool with the storing thing or her friends coming in and out. You treat me while I treat you well. I mean, I'm with you. I've lived on and off campus and I didn't have a locker. I had a freaking backpack. These lazy weirdos should try it out. I had an aunt who worked at my high school and had a microwave in her office that me and my cousins and our friends were allowed to occasionally use to skip the line for microwaves in the cafeteria. Instead of using this as an occasional privilege, my friends would purposely bring things that needed to be microwaved and try to barge into her office every day and not bring cutlery because they would just grab her plastic stuff that she pays for. But since I'm not in a hole, as soon as I saw this was happening, I shut it down and told them they'd been abused and lost the privilege to use it. They were pissed and tried to make fun of me and I just rolled my eyes and told them to grow up. They weren't my friends for long. Moral of the story sounds like OP's roommate needs to quit being a pushover. I am willing to bet the reason she took her friend's side is because her friends are putting pressure on her which is childish and rude. She should be telling them to shut up and respect the no because they abuse the privilege or get lost. Next story. My 21 female live with my mother 37. She got pregnant extremely young and my father was never in the picture. My grandparents also died young so it's just me and her. My mother has this disgusting habit where when she gets mad at someone or something she yells at me. Not only yelling she also tells me that she hates me, regrets having me, that I am extremely selfish and no good etc. We spent New Year's Eve separately. She was on a trip and I was at home with my boyfriend. She came home around 11 p.m. I was at home alone and was extremely tired because of the night before. When she passed through the door, she asked me if there was any milk in the house. Not asking how am I, not even saying hello. I said I didn't know because I don't drink milk usually and it's not something I checked. Then I checked and there was almost no milk in the house. She asked me why I didn't buy milk knowing she always drinks her coffee with milk. I said I just saw the box. I didn't check since I don't drink or use milk and also I didn't think that she would come home from a trip and immediately wanting coffee. She told me she had no coffee that day and I said there was no way I would know that. So she was yelling this whole time. That wasn't very unusual of her but then she started telling me that I'm selfish. 
ungrateful, unthoughtful, worthless human being. Basically a parasite living under her roof. I know it sounds like I'm leaving details behind, but I'm not. She told me all of these things because I forgot to check the milk. She goes on telling me that she does not want to live with me anymore. I should just go and live with my father that I am a burden to her. Then today came and I didn't leave my room. I didn't even eat or did anything outside of my room. She somehow found other things to yell at me, so she did just that. She saw some pants with black spots under and then just yelled at me saying the same thing she said the night before. I tried to be calm and I even apologized for forgetting, but she just went on and on and on about how I'm a worthless parasite who ruined her life. So in the end, I told her you are an extremely pathetic person. You will die alone and I will not buy you a grave. So as I was saying, this is her habit. This is what she does and I knew that and I knew if I didn't react to things she said, she would calm down eventually, but I couldn't do it this time. I just wanted to hurt her the way she hurts me, even though I know this is a wrong thing to do. I just wanted to know if the guilt I feel is valid or not. I want to be a better person than her and I know mirroring her behavior is not a way to do that. Damn, my mother behaved just like that. I fell into the trap of fighting back many times. I think this behavior is often known as borderline personality disorder. A toxic person will drain you emotionally. It's a cycle of guilt and anger because society dictates you respect your parents unconditionally. Don't let this guilt happen. I found it best to walk away. I left home at 18 and never went back. As an adult, I saw her on holidays and other family gatherings, but I remained detached. You have to take care of yourself. Dane to what you said was the absolute truth. When the time comes, don't let her guilt you into being there. She's obviously abusive and is blaming you for her own choices. I don't understand her point of view, frankly. I'm the single mother of an unplanned son who received no child support for most of his childhood. We had no clue where he was until Say finally found him. And things certainly would have been easier without him, but my life would have been so much emptier. That your mother doesn't see that proves she not only doesn't deserve you, but that she also deserves to end her days alone. To definitely a harsh statement, but totally understandable why you said it. Sounds like your mom stopped growing developmentally after she had you. Her behavior is unpredictable and unacceptable. It sounds like she could use some professional help to deal with her issues. They are her issues. You shouldn't be the target of her anger when she can't deal with life. Get yourself out of this situation as quickly as you can. It's not a healthy relationship. You are not the parent and you have no reason to feel guilty. However, I suspect 21 years of this kind of relationship has seriously affected your ability to have a healthy relationship. You may want to think about getting some professional help for yourself. Ta, the burden of single motherhood is extremely ugly and not at all fair to anyone involved. Statistically, children that grow up without a father are heavily predisposed to many negative outcomes. The numbers are actually insane. The mother has to carry all of the burden with the help of subsidies, but I can imagine the stress of making the wrong choices early on in their life often manipulated into them, but that's an aside and having to deal with the consequences alone that must take its toll. Rather than find grace to resist against the cruelty of life, it sounds like your mother projected all of that nastiness onto you. You are not responsible for her problems, and she does not necessarily deserve hatred. She needs to stop feeling guilt for where her life went wrong and passing it on to you. That may never happen. Close your heart to it and try to find some compassion for the vestiges of your mother you love while you grow and move on from her. The father left a void. He may have been booted out by a crazy spouse or he could have been the shitty person that really deserves all of the hate here. Life's complicated. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.